Hello, the world. Welcome back to this、uh, humanitarian live, love live session that <laughs> Pauline and I are doing on every Tuesday. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Sel. Hi, everybody. Yes. So,、uh, Pauline, it's time to talk about、um, this concept that many of us have: is like love life should just appear in our lives. Should we just wait around for love to appear, or should we actively do something to have it? Or、um, is there? Can look at like our job search, for instance, and see if there is anything that we want to take over. Without making it sound like a very heavy, difficult thing to do,、um, and this is the topic that we want to talk about. So, first, maybe Pauline, we could talk about why people they should just you know wait for love to appear instead of doing something about it. Why do you think we believe that? Okay. Um, I think there is two reasons. The first reason that people will tell you、uh, is that they say, "Oh, it should be natural. It should happen organically." And there is this really romantic idea of like finding love that is magical, and that yes, it just happens. And it's a beautiful idea. I'm not going to judge that. And I think we are also very much conditioned for this. If we think of the fairy tale, or if we think of all the Hollywood, you know, Netflix movies, it's like、yeah. this. And yes, I agree. But behind this idea, there is also fear. There is also the idea that if you make it a goal. If you declare like I want to find a partner, I want to find love. If you claim it, really,、uh, what I hear often is that oh, this would this would put so this would put so much more pressure. This would like、mm -hmm. up the ante, up the stakes. So as there are many parts in the background of our mind which is like oh, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid what if if it doesn't work,、um, then I I'm gonna suffer. So. Yes, this idea. Like, let's not put too much pressure on it. Let's not claim it as a goal. If it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. I have less pressure, and、uh, yes. Yeah,、mm. exactly. And I was also thinking of maybe the other reason, like fear of rejection,、uh, because if we feel like we want to go out and proactively search. Or like ask someone on a date, then obviously their like stakes are high, as if. And if they say no, or if they say something that we don't want to hear, then it would be like, oh my god, everything is falling apart, right? Some kind of a, like dramatic version of it. And then I think in order not to、um, make us go through that, we just mask it with other reasons or like like romantic. Fantasizing versions of it. Oh, you see, I shouldn't be. You see, I shouldn't be making it like a goal, or I shouldn't be proactively searching because the consequence is something that I don't like, right?、Um, and the other one that I was thinking of, let me do.、Um, and I think the other one might be also that、uh, you should definitely check is maybe that's also a masking for not letting go of the past, right?、Um, Because I think some some of us have difficulty admitting that、um, we let go of the past, or not like we think that we let go of the past, whatever the past ro romantic relationships, and then we're now ready for the new relationship, but secretly we're like wanting some part of it, or secretly wanting not to let go of it, and that's why we're just thinking, okay. Let just love appear, and if it does, then I will just let go. Until then, I keep entertaining past that I have. I think this could also be happening, and if that is, then being aware of that would be so important, so that you allow the new love relationship to occur, right? So we know that while we're doing it, and you know, you could of course. Reasons are why do you think you could just wait for love to happen, right? Maybe you have your valid reasons,、um, but just be curious that the reasons are not because of fear or because of romanticizing, because of believing that this is the only way to find love, which is obviously not true. There's so many ways. So, 
once they realize it, then the question is, okay, if I don't wait or if I don't just, yeah, wait for love to happen, what do I want to do? And then if we propose the idea of, well, how about you approach like a job search? Maybe some people will be put off by, oh my God, are you telling us to approach it like a job? Like I already have difficulty doing it. Now I have to do that with my love life, which I don't want to, right? So it could be that reaction, which is understandable and fine. So that's why we bring the parallels following to how or what we can use from that um, skill set that could be useful for our love search, right? Yeah, yeah I, well, just, just to go back on, on yeah, the past, just like totally agree with you, like, for me, the main reason that our love life are not, is not working as we want is all the reasons are from the past, either from our mm -hmm. childhood, either from a past relationship, whether we are aware or not, like it's really the past holding us back. So yes, if we, to answer your question, why would we want to approach, um, maybe, maybe we don't want to say it like approach the search for love as a search for job, but yes, maybe how can we bring the skill set, the competencies that we have that are, you know, helping us to get what we want, because this is really about this, like, what is it that you want? If you want uh, a relationship, why don't you use the determination, the motivation, the clarity that you show uh, in your work, that you demonstrate in your career? Why don't you bring this into your love life? Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at, yes, a job search, when you search for a job, you know usually what kind of job you want. You know where you want to be posted. You know what kind of job, if you're a program manager or administrative, you know, um, yeah, you, you have clarity on what you want. And based on this, you are going to take actions. You're going to apply. Maybe you're going to use like a third app, uh, third app uh, like an intermediate to look for a job, like a relief web, if I remember well, right? Uh, and then you're going to filter and you're not going to go to apply that for job that don't match what you want. Mm -hmm. So I'm using this um, analogy um, to... If you bring this in your love life and in your dating, you want to have clarity. I think this is a big one, like have clarity about who you want as a partner and what you want as a relationship, because it may seem very obvious, but because there's other factors that draw us to some partners, often there's some wounding parts of the past again that attract us that make us attracted to some type of partners that are not necessarily good for us. Sometimes there is pure chemical, physical attraction, and that can be great. But you want to balance this with, is this a good match? Does this person have the same value? Does uh, this person have the same vision for life? So once you have this in mind, this is going to help you like having a compass, having clarity. So this is one thing that I want to share, like bring this clarity on what is it you want in a partner in a relationship as you have this clarity about work. Number two is, yeah, claim it, this idea of claiming, like even if it's going to trigger some fears, I invite you to look for these fears if they are there. Like saying, I want a partner. Yes, it is important. I'm going to go for it. So making it as a goal. And then, yes, taking action, whether it's going on dating apps or any type of actions. Um, and what, what, maybe to answer your question, Estelle, about like how can we um, not come up with like this, oh, it's a job, oh, it's heavy. Like if I make uh, the search for love as a search for a job, oh my God, no, it's gonna like another thing on my to-do list, uh, no thank you. So you just wanna take the good part. You wanna take it, yes, I want this, is my desire. Yes, it's clear because when you do this, um, when you have this clarity and when you go and take actions to meet people where you just put more chances on your side, you just make, yes, it's going to trigger some fears. Yes, it's going to trigger maybe some emotion like, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if I get rejected? Uh, what if I get, yes, um, hurt? All these fears may gonna come up, but what's, what's the other option? What's the alternative? Waiting for Prince Charming to show up? great can happen but it can take more time so if you really want it and if you want it sooner than later then you can be in charge of creating it 
now you can bring some playfulness around it. It doesn't have to be like, okay, let me sit at my computer. Let me pull out uh, Tinder or Bumble and okay, let's go. You know, you can play with this because it's about meeting people and they can be some curiosity they can be some fun around this so there's different things you can do there is um how could this asking yourself how could this be fun how could i enjoy myself whether when i'm you know setting my profile on an app or whether i'm going on an app like how can i enjoy the moment how can i have fun so these are questions for you to ask yourself for to find what helps you so there is of course mindset that can help but there's again um, different practices that you can do, you know, you can do this having a glass of wine, if this is your thing, you can play music, you can dance, to set yourself up to have fun in the process before and during, right? Mm, yes. So one of the other things that popped to my head is how can we also do it in a way that is like exploring yourself through this journey i think this is also following you're saying it and i'm just summarizing maybe in a different way is like the the journey itself could be the way that you look at yourself is the way you explore your fears the way you decide what to do with those fears how to process them right because those fears probably going to come a lot during relationship later as well so get them before the relationship <laughs> because in the relationship it may even get exacerbated and more things so that's why um, whatever the fears that you are having now that's masked in different excuses you could have a look at them already and also actually it's um, an interesting journey to go through meeting other people where you meet them not from the mindset of I need you, because I think oftentimes we approach the job as such, and therefore we tend not to do well during the job interview because we get into the very convincing energy or we want to get into this, uh, I can do all the things kind of energy, right? Uh, which is not really serving in the job interview probably. And when you are doing it, in your dating life, it's you could also experience or experiment how you could show up in a way that you want this, you want to express your desires of wanting to have a love relationship, but at the same time, approaching it from the abundant mindset of you could always find someone else or you could go for someone else if this is not your fit instead of, oh, this could be like person right because some of the times we also i think fear why we don't want to go on these dates because we think that we come across as being desperate or we come across being like needy or we don't want to show that or we don't want to experience that and and all of that thing you always look at it how can you um work through them so that you come in the dating from a very unattached place, from a very like playful, like Colleen was saying, and and going through the experience because you want to experience yourself in that. And then also see how much you can express parts of you that you maybe haven't even realized you have. And then you discover a lot of things about you that you didn't know that you have, only because that in environment in the dating scene could to show this allow you to experiment with it right so i think we could like look at many reasons why not waiting or not taking a passive role could be useful in so many ways but also obviously with that in the way that's in line in integrity with who you are, right? We're not suggesting that if you're not someone who's extrovert or who is like into meeting people, we're not suggesting that you start like forcing yourself to do that. It's absolutely no point in doing that. Um, if you're someone who's very introverted and wanting to connect with people in different ways, that's not interacting directly, absolutely. Um, I think the whole point is just having the active mindset of how could you make this journey uh, 
uh, a journey of, you know, using some of the skills to get to where you want to go and also learning along the way. Anything else, uh, Pauline, on this? Yeah, no, I, I would like to uh, to continue and, and really reinforce what you're saying because when I'm hearing this, yeah, I think this is what we want to share is really shifting the mentality from uh, I need to to I want to, yeah. you know? It's not like, oh, those coaches uh, on LinkedIn or YouTube, they're telling me like I have to approach love as, they, as, as my work. No, it's like, how much do you want it? Right. And would you would you be willing to approach it differently and maybe take uh, bring some of the skill set and some of your motivation and some of your uh, know how in this? This is more what we're what we are offering. And I also really like what you said about the abundant mindset, because, yes, for me, this is what I love to share um, uh, about supporting women to to meet their person is really that this dating path is really a path to meet themselves first and foremost so yes um approaching this again not from i need to but i want to and i'm i want to i want i'm you do this from a, a full cup like i know myself i know what i want i'm desiring a partner from a place of abundance from a place of being whole already that's that's one thing and then the other thing is like it's an exploratory journey. So yes, you might encounter fear and we talk a lot about the fear and the comfort because it's absolutely part of the journey. But the journey is not only this, the journey is also learning about yourself and growing as such, you know. When you more meet more and more partner, you get more and more clear about what you want. When you learn um, to express what you want, you're also growing your confidence. When you're setting boundaries for the first time when you're you know for example going on a date the person arrives like, no i'm not letting this happen because my time is valuable you're putting boundaries and you're maybe doing things that are new to you yeah. people, and your you know, your confidence and your worthiness your sense of worthiness is growing so dating can also be the opportunity to do all yeah. this this is a big exactly thing. Amazing. And also just to continue on that is I think one of those things you could experience is also to say no, right? Something that um, like uh, Pauline, you were saying that setting boundaries comes not easy for some people, including me. And then I think one of the things that we tend not to do is like, we just feel like if, if we're someone who just keeps waiting what may happen also that after waiting one that we like appears in our life we tend to then just i don't want to say the word jumping but like you know getting rushed into starting a relationship and getting like in a bit of a pressured energy right and then we tend to say yes to things that we would not want to say yes to or we regret so that's why one of the um great ways in the dating scene is also looking at how you could immediately say no to before things are too late or for um make decisions as you go along but also this is a great opportunity for you to say no this is not how i want my person to be or who i want to be and let me um experiment with saying no and what happens and you will like experience if you're like me a lot of did i just do and some of the fear of loss comes along right of oh my god what if my perfect person was this and i just said no and then i start getting into this like drama so you go all of this and that's fine but then you realize no because you know yourself well to say no and you're not afraid to lose you're not afraid to say no and continue your journey of exploring and finding your person that you really want, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you touch again on the point of scarce, scarcity and also just before we're talking about scarcity yeah. within, like, do you feel full or do you feel like you're coming from a place exactly. of lack? But now you're talking about the idea that, yes, if you are not taking much action, if you're waiting, you know, for your Prince Charming to come or, or your Princess Charming to come. Um, 
there is less opportunities. So I think it's, it's what we're suggesting is to go and create opportunities. You know? yeah. Like imagine a go again, if we make the analogy with the work, it's not like waiting on your couch for a, a potential employer to come and knock at your door, you know, and you make, you create opportunities. And when you create opportunities, you're creating more chances for you to encounter more people, having more options, you know? So then you're not in a place of lack of partner of like, oh, there's just this one um, that I meet at a party and that's, and that's it. And so if uh, you can be like anxiously attached to that person and make, you know, uh, overlook red flags, overlook things that are not working, and when you have more opportunities and you're like, okay, there's this one, but there's also this one, like there's this job, but there's also this job, which one do I, do I prefer? So when you have more options, then you are in a place of agency and you can feel what feels better for you. Yeah, so exactly. One. Exactly. And maybe the last one on this point is that I was thinking whenever we are showing up from the mindset of love should just appear. I think we also showing up on the one hand, trying to be nonchalant and like not caring for the other person to start or make the first move, right? But on the other hand, secretly wanting that person to make the first move. So I think there is that not integrity in ourselves when we show up will then come all across as also not really waiting for the other person and the other one maybe also is that what if if you keep waiting your person that you want is also keep waiting for you <laughs> i was also thinking like Colleen, like we always uh, mirror our world right in a sense that our um, our world how we're showing up and if we're showing up in the waiting mood what if the other person is also in the waiting mood and then no one makes the first move and therefore we keep waiting right so obviously that's also something to consider if you are currently being in one more person you're looking for is also in the similar mindset then how do you want to overcome that mindset to come to closer to the person you're wanting right so i think uh that could be another like interesting way to look at how your current mindset might be influencing your love life currently. And then if you don't want that result, then how could you change it? Basically, this is uh, what we're suggesting. So anything on this topic of um, uh, approaching it more actively, I guess, is the advocacy we're making. Yeah, no, for me, I think we've we've covered well many things already, but yes, it's really an open reflection for you of like looking at how, how you approach your, your job, the energy that you put, the thoughts that you have about your job, about your 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 desire and motivation, your willingness to take action and to fail. I mean maybe this is the last one uh, to mm -hmm. add, is that um, what make us usually not take action in our love life is this fear of failure, the failure. When I say failure is fear of being rejected, the fear of like uh, having life confirming that, oh, there is something wrong with me, it's not working, uh, that we were discussing last time with Asel. I was saying, um, I think that when we approach our job, we we are less afraid to, to fail. And Asel was telling me, well, some people are also afraid to fail in their job. Yes, it depends. But usually we feel more charged around the love life mm -hmm. because of course it, we take it, we can take it more personally. So again, yeah, the reflections for you to look at how you approach your love life, the, the, the willingness you have to fail, you know, and the desire to you have to take to take action and how how could you bring some of this into your life, love life you know? and look at, at the thoughts that you have around this? Exactly. Amazing. So just the last point to add is that um, whatever you think you are best at in your job or in your job search, what are the doing or so good at approaching or your mindset around it? that you think helped you getting exactly what you wanted, that mindset we would love for you to also think about applying for your love life, right? So don't take anything that's heavy and difficult 
the ones that you think about your job, don't take that. <laughs> but take only the part that you think you are so amazing at it that people also love when you can, I don't know, uh, bring this skill set to the table and that type of mindset you could apply in your love search and then see how that changes your approaches to how you're doing things or how you're showing up in your search for love, right? And always um, trusting yourself of knowing the answer, trusting yourself that you you know how to do it, you know how to experience this journey, set it up in a way that is easy and playful and like enjoyable for you and not like obligation and to do and another thing that is heavy to conquer right because as soon as heaviness enters into the search then yeah it will become like another task which we don't want obviously for you to have it so that's why think about how can you make it like Pauline was saying as exploratory as enjoyable at the same time learning so much about yourself that you are amazed how much yourself and then, you know, things get better from there. So having said that, thank you so much, Pauline, for this uh, amazing conversation as usual. And you listeners, yes, and you listeners, uh, let us know how that search is going or how that mindset is. And we'd love to um, help you out in whatever the questions you have or coaching you need in going forward with your yeah with uh, finding the person thank you see you next Tuesday. bye